Hello guys, this is Coach Knight. Um, today we're going to be talking about infinite geometric series and finding their sums. Uh, the formula for an infinite geometric series is S, which stands for sum, equals A sub 1, which is the first term, divided by 1 minus R, which is the common ratio. Uh, the name of it tells you what you're doing infinite geometric series means infinite means you're going to keep adding forever geometric means that you are multiplying to get the next number in the series and series means you're adding them all up so uh, we're actually not going to use the formula on the first two examples we are going to use uh, our calculators and just find the first two examples by just plugging them in the calculators. Now, we have to find five different sums for each problem. It says to find S sub 1, S sub 2, S sub 3, S sub 4, S sub 5. So, here we go. Let me get my calculator out just like y'all have yours. And pretty straightforward. I'm going to find S sub 1. It just means it's the first term. 1 fifth is 0 0.2. S sub 2 means you add the first two terms. So that's 1 fifth plus 1 tenth. If you put that in your calculator, you get 0 0.3. S sub 3, you add the first three terms. 1 fifth plus 1 tenth plus 1 20th, you get 0 0.35. S sub 4, you add the first four terms. S sub, five, oh, S sub 1 plus S sub 2 plus S sub 3 plus S sub 4. And for that one, you will get 0 0.375. And finally, S sub 5 means we add all five of the terms. So one fifth plus one tenth plus one out of 20 plus one out of 40 plus one out of 80. And that is equal to 0 0.3875. And again, I'm, I'm just plugging all those into my calculator. Um, nothing really a lot to that. Uh, except uh, you just have to make sure you put parentheses around your fractions when you're plugging them in the calculator. Now, notice it starts out at 0.2 and then goes up to 0.3 and then 0.35 and 0.375 and 0.384 or 875. So as you can tell, the number keeps going up, but it keeps going up smaller and smaller. Uh, and we could say this, these sums are approaching... And again, this is just a guess, but uh, they're basically approaching 0 0.4. Uh, so it, it keeps getting closer and closer to 0 0.4. Uh, for the second one, do the same thing. Our first term is 8. So the first sum is 8. S sub 2 means add the first two terms. So that's 8 plus 2, which is 10. S sub 3 is 8 plus 2 plus 1 half. That's 10.5. S sub 4 would be 10 point, let's see here, 8 plus 2 plus 1 half plus 1 eighth. And that is... Ten point six two five, and finally, the fifth s s sub five is eight plus two plus one half plus one eighth plus one sixteenth, and that is ten point six. Excuse me, I wrote it wrong. Ten point six eight. 
seven five. So as you can see, this one is approaching. Uh, and again, we're we're kind of guessing here, but it looks like it's approaching. I don't know about ten point seven, ten point eight. Uh, we're not really sure. So these three examples, example three, four, and five, these we are actually finding their sum because what happens up here, you may not have noticed on examples one and two, our R, for example, one was one half. They were multiplying by one half every time to get the next number. For number two, our R, they were multiplying by one fourth. So as you can tell, R for both of these examples was less than one. And if your R is less than one, it will eventually add numbers that are so small that it doesn't actually affect their outcome. So you will get a sum. Now, obviously if R is more than one, well then you're adding numbers over and over and over again that keep getting bigger and there is no sum because the sum is infinity if you just keep adding numbers over and over again but if the r is less than one you will get a sum because eventually you're adding numbers that are so small that they don't affect the overall number and so we'll we'll talk about that um down here with examples three four and five so they want us to find the sum of the infinite geometric series if it exists. So remember, it can not exist, and it doesn't exist if your r is greater than 1. So if r is greater than 1, you cannot get an a, a infinite geometric series. The sum doesn't exist. r has to be less than 1 for it to exist. So, number 3 here. First thing we need is a 1. A1 is just what do you get when you plug in the first term. So it says n is 1 to start with. So that would be negative 1 half to the 1 minus 1 power, which is negative 1 half to the 0 power, which is 1. So our A1 is 1. R is what is in the parentheses. So in this case, R is negative 1 half. And basically, all we have to do plug it in. So S, there is no N because again, we're going to infinity. So there's no certain term that we're going to. S equals A1, which is one divided by one minus negative one half. It's always one minus the R. It's always S equals A1 over one minus R. So you just plug it in, that will be 1 divided by, let's see here, 1 minus a negative 1 half is 1.5. And if you divide 1 by 1.5 and hit math enter enter on your calculator, you will get 2 thirds. So the sum is 2 thirds. So basically if you keep adding those numbers up, your, your sum will be two-thirds. Now, the thing about the sums is it doesn't ever actually get to two-thirds. It's just approaching two-thirds. It keeps getting closer and closer and closer to two-thirds. And that's really hard to, I guess, demonstrate uh, on a video. But if you kept adding the numbers, the numbers that you kept adding would keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And so the numbers that you're adding do not affect the overall number. That makes any sense so example four here a1 is we plug in the first term so five fourths to the one minus one power again that's going to be three times five fourths to the zero power which is three now uh, really this problem it doesn't matter because i should have started with this r is 5 fourths, and since r is greater than 1, this one does not exist. If your r is greater than 1, it does not exist. Okay? Uh, 
all that means is your number, when you keep adding, they're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, finally, example five. This one, they've already got the, the A1s right there. It's three. Okay, so A1 equals three. And then our R is what are they doing to get the next term? So it looks like they're multiplying by one-fourth. So since R is less than one, we'll have a sum. S equals A1 over one minus R. A1 is 3 divided by 1 minus 1 fourth. That's 3 divided by 3 fourths. If you stick that in your calculator, the sum will be 4. So, those are three examples of how to find it. Um, find the geometric or the sum of the geometric series if it exists. Uh, last three examples, we're going to be right. Uh, it says write the repeating decimal as a fraction in simplest form. Uh, I'm going to show you the long way to do this, and then I'll tell you kind of a, a, a shortcut method here. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to write out a geometric series for these decimals that are repeating. So understand, this is going to be 0 0.555555 forever, okay? So the first digit right here, that 5. That is equal to 5 tenths. That's in the tenths place. Plus the second 5 right here. Well, that's 5 hundredths. Plus the third 5 right there is the 5 thousandths. And we'll just keep going on and on and on. And so now we have our our series here. A1 is 5 tenths, which reduces, by the way, to 1 half. R, what did they multiply each time to get the next problem? They get multiplied by 1 tenth. 5 tenths times 1 tenth is 5 hundredths. 5 hundredths times 1 tenth is 5 thousandths, and so on and so forth. And now you just plug them in. So S will be A1, 1 half, divided by 1 minus 1 tenth. That's 1 half divided by 9 tenths, which if you reduce that, you get 5 ninths. That, if you put 0.5555555 on and on and you change that to a fraction in your calculator, uh, then it will turn out to be five ninths. Now that is, of course, the shortcut. You can just put in your calculator 0 0.5555555 and then change it to a fraction if your calculator does that. Uh, or if it doesn't, you can do this. Uh, you can also know that if it's the same number over and over again, well then it will be five ninths. Or if that was 0.6666666666, uh, it would be 6 ninths, which reduces, of course, to 2 thirds. If it was 0.7777777, it would be 7 ninths. So you can use some common sense as well. Uh, for number 7, this time it's 0.727272, and it go, goes on and on. So for this one's a little different. We take the first two numbers, so that's 72 out of 100, plus the next 72, let's see here, that's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, would be 72 over 10,000. And then finally, our last 72, we would have tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, 72 over one million. And then we would keep going if we wanted to. But, uh, again, just to show you how quick and easy it is, A1 is 72 over 100. R, what did we multiply by here to get the next one? The answer to that is 1 over 100 this time. On number 6, we multiplied by 1 tenth. For this one, we're adding two zeros every time to the bottom. So we're multiplying by 1 over 100 on this. 
So S equals 72 over 100 divided by 1 minus 1 hundredth, which equals 72 over 100 divided by 99 over 100. And if you flip those, you get 72 over 99. Are you seeing the pattern here? Number 6 was 5 over 9. Number 7, since it's two decimal places, is 72 over 99. If it was 0.353535, it would be 35 over 99. Okay? So, and again, you can just put 0 0.72, 0 0.72, 0 0.72, 0 0.72 in your calculators. And, uh... Or I should, I said that all wrong. 0 0.727272, you don't need all those points. And then change that to a fraction, and it will tell you that that is 72 over 99. You've got to put a bunch in there. Uh, and then 72 over 99 will reduce. Oops, wasn't done here. That reduces to 8 over 11 because 9 will go into both 72 and 99. So it reduces to 8 over 11. All right, our last one, I'm going to kind of show you the, the shortcut way. I've shown you two the long way, so here's the shortcut way. This is going to be 13.232323, so it's very similar to number 7. So this one, the 13, is different. So it's just over here by itself. It's going to be 13... And then since this is in the hundredths place, that would be 23 over 99. So 13 and 23 99 would be the sum for that one. And again, I just kind of skipped. Uh, and it's just a little extra here. Uh, if you do the shortcut, it's, it's very simple. Let's say we had 0 0.23. 5, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5, so on and so forth. Well, that's going to be, now we're in the thousandths, so that's going to be 235 over, this is the sum, over 999. So, hopefully you can see the pattern. Hopefully these problems aren't too tough for you. And uh, good luck in your work. Enjoy.